Hey there, I'm Dr. Josie DeVideo, longtime dentist, registered yoga teacher, and certified wellness consultant. Today I answer the question, is coaching a scam? You know, between dental consultants, life coaches, business coaches, weight loss coaches, you name it, someone is coaching it or consulting you on it. But what is a coach or a consultant anyway? And how exactly do they help? And how do you know whether or not it would be worth the investment for you? This week's podcast is inspired by an ongoing discussion I see inside of dental groups. And usually it's a debate between those who swear by coaches and those who think they're a scam. Coaching can be incredibly useful as a container for growth, but you need to enter into it with your eyes wide open. Some people get brilliant and life-changing results from coaching, and other people feel completely disappointed and maybe even harmed by the experience. But from my experience as a consultant and a coaching and consulting client myself, And honestly, as my experience as an outside observer, I've learned that the determining factor is your expectation and your willingness to learn and be coachable. You know, I am currently being coached myself on how to be a better consultant. And so I am in a cohort uh, with my coach and there are other clients in there and people like me who's doing the work, getting pretty good results. I'm really happy with my experience. And then I have other people in my cohort who are complaining nonstop and it's not working for them and they think it stinks. But you have to be realistic. You have to understand, you know, several things in order to make it a successful relationship. So to answer the question in the title of this episode, coaching can be a scam. If the coach is setting unrealistic expectations or promising very specific results that are not really in their control, but the responsibility doesn't always lie solely on the coach or the consultant, you know, dentists or clients, as in my example, they frequently have this like pie in the sky assumption. And it usually stems from not understanding what the coaches actually do, or maybe the clients are just wishful thinking, right? Thinking as long as I pay for something, something magical is going to happen, right? So since coaching or consulting can be a bit of an investment, it's a good idea to understand how it works and whether or not it's the right fit for you before you make a commitment to it. So for best results, it's absolutely essential to go into a coaching or consulting relationship with your eyes wide open about what coaching can and cannot provide. So I'd like to offer some insights into how coaching or consulting works, and hopefully it'll give you a better idea of whether or not it's right for you. The most important thing to understand about working with a coach or a consultant is that it's not magic, right? This relationship shows up in relatively small pockets of your life, but you as the client shows up to the relationship with all of your life's history and experiences and predispositions. And you carry those things with you in between coaching sessions. So while you're working on growing and changing, you're still you, right? It's sort of like when patients come to the office, they see us twice a year for cleanings and they expect that those two cleanings are gonna solve all of their perio problems. That's not how it works. We rely on what they're doing in between sessions to see if they're healing or getting healthier. Sorry, Louie has something to say about it too. So no matter how amazing your coach might be or your consultant, you know, how famous they might be, you are still you and you still need to be open to working on you. And while a coaching relationship can support and accelerate your growth, it's not fully responsible for whatever outcomes you're hoping for. So when they talk about facilitating transformation or helping you make changes, they're really only able to support the growth that you are committed to creating for yourself. All right, so let me give you some specific things that a coach can and cannot do. A coach can hold up a mirror to help you see yourself more clearly. They can help you identify patterns, habits, things that are holding you back, things that are keeping you from achieving what you're hoping to achieve. 
and they can definitely strategize with you to save you time, to accelerate your journey, to get you to where you are wanting to go faster. But a coach can only meet you where you are and you have to be willing to be met there. And you have to be committed to changing because that's why you're engaging their services, right? If you could do it on your own, then you'd already be doing it, whatever that is. So it's really important to recognize that the coach is only one piece of the puzzle. You're still responsible for putting together the other pieces like receiving the information, implementing the information, integrating it and adapting it or adjusting it to the other pieces, right? As you get more data or evidence of what is or is not working in your situation. Transformation happens based on your behavior, the habits you've gathered and built over a period of time. So a good coach holds space for you to name these results, to get you committed to them. They partner with you, right? To make the action plan or the strategy, the things that will lead to the results that you want. But you're the one who needs to take the action. Coaching works best if you are willing to take responsibility for achieving the results you're looking for. This also means being honest about what you're willing to do or not willing to do in between your sessions. A good coach recognizes their role as your advisor, but they also realize the limitations of that role. And they'll appreciate you telling them honestly about what you are or are not ready for. And ultimately you have to decide if you're ready. You have to be open, willing, excited for the growth, but also understanding that sometimes growth is uncomfortable, right? Sort of like going to the gym and working out. When you first start doing that, It hurts, it's uncomfortable, right? You're sore, but that also means you're growing. So you need to ask yourself, are you a little bit uncomfortable in the service of growth? A coach is someone who helps you identify what you want and strategizes with you the actions to get you there based on your practice style, your family dynamics, and even cultural considerations. Coaching helps you create a plan It holds you accountable to the plan. It helps you identify blind spots, places of resistance, blocks, limiting beliefs, and it helps you brainstorm or troubleshoot how to work with your existing circumstances and whatever might come up as you're working towards this transformation. Coaching can provide a space for you to get really honest with yourself. The more self-awareness, the more authenticity and trust you bring to the coaching relationship, the more you're going to get from it. A coach can meet you where you are and they can boost your progress to help you get to your desires faster, more efficiently. And a coach can prevent you from standing still, from standing too long at a fork in the road. And they can boost your confidence so that you can pick up your pace. But the road still needs to be walked by you. If you can understand all of that, then you will have a realistic expectation of a coaching or consulting relationship. And listen, the truth is you can be your own coach, right? I mean, any growth that will happen with a coach can certainly happen on your own, but it will take longer. And you don't have the benefit of having another set of unbiased eyes on your situation. You know, I want to recognize that coaching can be an investment. And some people who need coaching the most may not have the financial padding to test out some coaches to see if they're the right fit. So if a coach you're vetting offers courses, you know, something at a lower price point, or entry level offers, you might wanna invest in those and see if you like their coaching style or their personality. Because if you don't like them as people, you may not be inclined to listen to them as a coach. For example, I have some courses that I offer that are self-paced and they're a lower price point uh, you know, than my signature program, than my one-on-one and group coaching program. Um, and if you're interested in those, you can see the links to them in the description of this episode. But the idea is to check them out first and see if you're learning concepts that will help you grow. And it's also so that you can see how I teach and what my style is 
and if what I'm talking about resonates with you and you might decide you're ready to move forward with one-on-one coaching, but you also might decide and admit that you're not in the right place to either commit doing the work or to unraveling the beliefs or whatever it is that's keeping you from living the life you want. And here's the thing, if you're not in the right place or headspace, you're not ready. So when I see these debates in Facebook groups about whether or not coaching is a scam, it's likely that the one who got nothing out of it either wasn't ready or didn't engage a coach that was a good fit for them. You know, ironically, individualized coaching is great for people who claim to have no time. If your time is so limited or so precious, you know, you can't feasibly listen to an expert, read their book, and then extrapolate that to your particular situation or life in dentistry. So if you want laser focused support on your particular situation, then coaching might be a good fit for you because in many ways it will save you a ton of time. Some of the dentists that I work with one-on-one are doing pretty well financially. They're just overwhelmed with all of the things and it's become hard to know where to start making things less stressful. And they recognize they have blind spots and they want someone else to look at things with them and help them go to the next level, not only in business, but in their lifestyle, right? And living well and living with peace and harmony. So they enjoy having a strategy partner and they appreciate having an outside perspective from someone who has lived their life. So how do you decide whether or not you're ready for a coach? Well, one way is that you've tried everything you know to do and you're not satisfied with how things are going. Um, Another one is that you know what you need to do, but you don't do it for some reason. You know, you might be needing someone to hold you accountable or to give you smaller actionable steps or to help you understand the mindsets that are holding you back or they can even help you see if you even need to do the thing you're trying to do. Sometimes we get stuck in these thought patterns and you don't even need that thing. And another way to know if you're ready or not for a coach is, you know, to decide if you're willing to make the most out of the investment that you're making. So I'd love to hear your questions or comments on this episode. So check the description of this video and see how you can connect with me on that front. And if you have found value in this episode, I'd love a thumbs up. So I know to create more content like this for you. And hey, you might as well share this episode with a dental friend who would benefit from it too. Be well, friend.